All right, so for this problem, um, we're being asked to calculate the joint reaction force components. So the X and Y components. So I'm gonna write that real quick here, just so I know what I'm solving for. So I want JR, JRF X, I don't know what that is, and I want JRF Y, because those are gonna be the X and the Y components of the joint reaction force. So the first step when you have a problem like this is you wanna draw everything in and you want to um, draw in your coordinate system and basically do some, um, just do some definitions with your, dry, uh, your drawing. So what I'm gonna do first is um, this problem is static. We know that the leg is not gonna be moving. So when a problem is static, we can use three different equations which will be sum of forces in the y direction is zero, sum of forces in the x direction is also equal to zero, and then sum of, uh, we're gonna do torque, sum of torque is zero. Okay, so these are three equations we can use anytime the problem is gonna be static, okay? Next thing we wanna do is define our coordinate system. So I'm gonna just do a very basic, simple x, y coordinate like so, okay? And then we're gonna wanna define um, in which direction is moment positive and negative. So I'm gonna stick with what Dr. Smith does and say that when a moment is in the um, counterclockwise direction, that is positive. All right, perfect. So we have our equations written out. We have the coordinate system and stuff done. Um, I'm also gonna put the basic equation for torque Torque is equal to um, the force times um, perpendicular distance, or in this case, we'll just call it moment arm, MA. And then force is also equal to mass, maybe do a lowercase m, mass times acceleration, okay? Those are just basic equations. All right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to complete our drawing. So we're asked for the joint reaction forces in the X and the Y, but we don't have them drawn anywhere on here. So what I wanna do is I wanna go through each of these three forces here, and I wanna break them up into X and Y components and draw them on here, okay? So why don't I just start here at the ankle. So we have a force of an ankle weight coming down um, it's coming straight down and based on my coordinate system, it has no X component because you can see it's coming straight down vertically as drawn in the coordinate system. So this force that's coming down is both the resultant force and it's just the force in the Y direction. Okay, so we don't need to draw anything here. We'll go to this next force and it's pretty much the same thing. It's going straight down there's nothing going in the X direction um, as defined by the coordinate system. So again, this is the force of the shank. It's 30 newtons, and that's the same as the Y component of that same force. There's no X component. Next, we have the force of the quadriceps. So the force of the quadriceps is at an angle of 45 degrees. And it's, it's at an angle of 40, 45 degrees, and this is our coordinate system. So this force is going to have an X and a Y component because it's not perfectly vertical and it's not perfectly horizontal. So it must have X and Y components. How I'm going to draw that, I'm gonna use red to keep the colors the same. I'm gonna start at the head or the tail of the force. So right where it's attaching onto the uh, tibia. And I'm gonna draw it up to the head of the resultant force arrow right there, okay? So from the tail to the head, okay? And then I'm gonna do, so this is gonna be my Y component. That's gonna be my Y component. It's going perfectly um, perpendicular, straight up and down. Now for the X component, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start here at the tail, and then I'm gonna draw it out horizontally like that. And I'm gonna label it F, Q, X. So it's important to label all of these forces so you don't get mixed up in your head, okay? And the color kind of helps a little bit here. So here we have the perfect X and Y components of that. 
Um, and we don't have any of these values. Okay, everything is, that's been given to us is drawn in the problem. Okay, next thing we need to draw in is we need to draw in the joint reaction forces. And that's what we're trying to solve for ultimately. So, by definition, the resultant joint reaction force is going to be parallel to the muscle force and it's going to go straight through the joint. So, and it's going to be also in the opposite direction of the muscle force, okay, to, to keep the joint intact. So it's going to look exactly like this, all right? It's parallel to this uh, resultant force of the quadriceps and it's in the opposite direction going exactly through the uh, joint. And so I'm gonna call that JRF. And it's just JRF because it's a resultant force, it's not an X or a Y, okay? But the next thing I need to draw in is we're searching for this X and Y component. So I need to draw those in on my picture too. Now, it's a, kind of similar to drawing how we um, drew over here with these forces, but there's a little bit of a, um, there's a little bit of a tip to make drawing this easier so it looks nice on your picture. So for joint reaction forces, for those ones only, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to start at the head of the arrow and draw to the tail. Okay, so I'm going to start right here at the head. Okay, and I'm going to draw to the tail there. And I'm going to start at the head here and draw up to the tail. Now it's a little messy with my picture here, but if you can imagine, and then I'm gonna draw in the arrows are going to be, they're all gonna overlap over each other, okay? So essentially what it looks like, to just take it over here to make it a little less messy, is this force is going in like this, and this Y force is going in like that. So all the arrows are converging at that one point. Okay, and then I'm gonna label these. So this is gonna be JRF X and JRF Y. This gets a little messy for you and there's a lot going on. You can draw it out separately and she'll give you points for that. You can draw this out separately and just know that that's how it's supposed to go in. But I kind of like drawing it all on one diagram if I can. So, you, but you could draw it out separately just so you don't get twisted in your head, okay? And then we even want to draw the muscle one again too. You can redraw that. 45 and then right f of q f of q y and f of q x so that's what kind of they look like out of the picture okay which you can do all right so we have that we have all those forces drawn in we have our coordinate system labeled and the moment defined so everything looks great as far as everything we need in the picture um, we also have these perpendicular distances, these moment arms for these three forces are given. Okay, so that's where these numbers are coming in. Okay, so our next step is we're trying to ultimately find the JRF X and Y, but in order to find these forces, the X and the Y, we need to know the X and Y components of every force that's on here. So we need to know the X and Y components of this force, this force, the muscle force, F of, F of quadriceps, and the joint reaction force. So as you can see, maybe a little more clearly here, we don't know what any of the value of any of these forces are. We need to find the X and Y of all of these in order to be able to solve our problem, okay? So what we do have is we have these forces given and we have perpendicular distances. So when you ever have forces with their own perpendicular distances, you can do torque. And we said from over here, we said torque is equal to the force times its moment arm. Now, 
we know this problem is also static. No, no moving is occurring here, right? So we know that the sum of all the torques has to be equal to zero. So we can use these two equations to help us solve for, um, essentially solve for the torque that the quadriceps produces, but ultimately find the force that the quadriceps produces, because that's what we want to find in order to find these two components here, okay? So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to bring down this zero. Say so zero is equal to the sum of all the torques, okay? Um, now we know if we look at our problem here, joint reaction force goes through the joint. Whenever you have a force that goes through the joint, it produces no torque, produces no moment. But these three other forces aren't going through the joint. So we know that they must produce a moment or a torque. They have to because we have a joint here and their forces are acting on it, okay? So these three can produce a torque, so we're gonna include those in the problem. We don't need to worry about JRF right now because it doesn't produce a torque, okay? So we also define that a counterclockwise torque is positive. So for this one, and I'll draw this in there, Maybe it might be a little more clear here. But this F of Q is going to cause a counterclockwise positive torque. And these guys here are pulling down on the joint, so these guys are going to cause a negative torque. And sometimes I like to just draw these in on your picture too. You don't have to do that. It might make it a little more messy. But uh, conceptually, that's, what, that's what's going on. So in order for the leg to stay perfectly still and be static, the forces in the positive direction have to equal the forces, or I'm sorry, the torques in the positive direction have to equal the torques in the negative direction. They must be equal in order to, for there to be no movement, okay? So we're gonna set it equal to zero, and we're gonna look at all the positive torques that are going on. So there's only one. Force of quadriceps is the only one that's going to produce a positive torque, a positive counterclockwise torque. Okay, so I'm going to write that. So we can write it simply as, if it's easier, we can write it in first in terms of torque, and then we'll break it down. So torque of the quadriceps is positive because it's counterclockwise, and we're going to do minus torque of the shank, torque of shank, and minus torque of the weight, okay? But ultimately, we wanna find what these forces are equal to. So we don't really want torque so much. But through this other equation here, we can break torque up into force times its moment on it, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, next, I'm gonna move this torque over to the zero side because I wanna eventually find the quadriceps. So I'll write it as torque of quadriceps minus, and this is gonna be a negative now, because there's a positive going to the other side, it's gonna be negative, torque of shank minus torque of weight. Okay, but like I said, I, we don't really want torques, so we wanna find what these forces are. But we can break it up into the force times its moment on it. So what that's gonna be is it's gonna be a negative force of quadriceps times the moment arm of quadriceps is equal to negative force of the shank times the uh, moment arm of the shank minus, because it's again a negative clockwise direction, force of the weight times the moment arm of the weight. And this is perfect. Now we have everything in here to solve for the force of the quadriceps. All of these other values are given to us in the problem. So I'm going to rewrite it again. We're solving for force of the quadriceps. So that's ultimately what we're looking for. But we know the moment arm of the quadriceps. That was given as 0.1 meters. So I'm going to write 0 0.1 meters is equal to negative 
The force of the shank was given to us as 30 newtons. I'm gonna times it by its perpendicular distance to the axis, which is 0 0.8. And then I'm gonna do a minus here. Force of the weight, which is 10 newtons. And times its moment arm, which is 1.5 meters. Okay, now we're just gonna do basic math and, and solve for that. So, I need to bust out my calculator here because I'm not the greatest at math, mental math at least. So I'm gonna solve this first. We'll do um, 30 times 0.8 and we get 24. I'm gonna drag that negative sign down so I got negative 24. This is gonna be um, Newton meters if you wanna put the units in there. And then next I'm gonna do uh, negative 10 times 1.5, and which is 15, so negative 15 newton meters. All right, F of Q, which we don't know, times 0 0.1 meters. All right, now I'm gonna solve for F of Q by dividing this guy out. So we're going to divide by 0 0.1 meters, and that's going to cancel my meters here completely out, right? Okay? So I'm going to get negative F of Q is equal to, now we got to do this math here. So I'm going to do 4. Divided, divided by 0.1. It's equal to 390, it's gonna be negative. Negative 390. Um, and we're gonna get just newtons because our meters canceled out. But as you can see here, we have negative force of quadriceps is equal to a negative number. We can just simply get rid of the negatives, right? Divide by negative one, and we're gonna get the force of the quadriceps is equal to 390 newtons. Okay, sweet. So then, usually what I like to do is I like to write it in the problem so I remember that I have it. Uh, 390 newtons, not 90. And we can even write it here. So now we just solve that, which is great. That just gave us the result and force of the quadriceps. But the problem is we still don't know these x and y components. And that's what we're solving for. But we were given an angle here from the vertical, which was 45 degrees, which I kind of have drawn out here. So what we can do next is use trig to, with that angle and this resultant force, to find the components of the muscle force. So that's what I'm going to do next. Um, maybe for, uh, just for visualization, um, I'm going to draw it out here as the triangle looks, just so that you can follow what I'm doing. Um, essentially, this is what we have here. Not a very great drawn picture. We have our parallelogram law. We know this is 45 degrees. And we know this force is equal to 390 newtons. And we need to find the y. I'll just label y and x. So we can use SOHCAHTOA. All that good stuff. All right, so let's do um, let's do the Y first. So we're gonna do I'm gonna use this angle, this 45 here, and I'm gonna do adjacent over hypotenuse because here's our uh, right angles, which makes this 390 the hypotenuse, and then this is gonna be the adjacent. That's gonna be opposite. So I'm gonna do cosine of 45 is equal to y, because it's my, oh, that's not look good. It's my adjacent over my hypotenuse, um, which is, I'm sorry, 390. Okay, and then I'm gonna solve for that, and then my um, x component, remember these two are gonna be the same, so that would just be sine of 45 is equal to x over hypotenuse, okay? 
So I'll let you do that math. I'm just gonna do it real quick for time's sake on my calculator here. So for uh, the Y, I'm getting, I'm gonna just say 275 for simplicity, Newtons. And for the X, I'm getting uh, 45, oops. I also got 275, which actually makes sense because this is a 45 degree angle, so it's a 45, 45 uh, triangle. So you're gonna get the same values. So that's good. Uh, if you know your trig, you know that makes sense. So we're good there. So we're gonna get 275 newtons for both. So now we can write those guys in. And now we have everything we need to solve for JRF X and JRF Y. We don't really need to know what JRF is because we just want to find the components of it. But now we have the X and Y component values of every single force in the diagram. Okay, so now we get to use sum of forces. So what I'm going to do is erase right here. Oh. I'm going to draw this here so it's a little... Alright, so we need to find both the x and the y components. So why don't we start with the x first? So again, we're looking for JRF x. We know by definition, because this, this problem is static, sum of forces in the x must equal zero. Okay? Next thing I'm going to do is just drop my zero over. And now I'm going to look at my diagram and look for every single force that's in the x direction only. Okay, and I'm going to keep in mind my coordinate system whether they're positive or negative. So if you look here, I have a force from the quadriceps in the x direction going this way, and that's equal to 275 newtons. Now it's going from right to left, which I defined as negative in my coordinate system. So I'm going to make that negative 270, uh, yeah, 275 newtons. Okay. I also have a joint reaction force in the x direction going the opposite way, positive, and that's what I'm trying to solve for. So I'm going to just do positive because it's in the positive direction and then do JRF x. Now I'm going to look if I have any other x forces and I don't. There's not an x component here, there's not one there, and I've got one for those two. So this is simple math solving and you're going to get JRF x is equal to 275 newtons. That's one of your answers right there, throw a little box around it. Next, we need to find the y, y component. So I'm gonna do sum of forces, pretty much the same thing, but this time in the y direction, it's gonna be equal to zero, all right, because it's static. Now I'm gonna look at every single of these forces and, and see which ones are in the y direction, okay? I'm gonna drop my zero over, and then now I'm gonna look. So I have this joint reaction force is going down into the joint. So down is a negative direction, so I'm gonna write negative JRF, okay? I have a force in the y direction from the quadriceps, which we found was 275, and is positive, it's going upwards. So plus 275 newtons. And then these guys are also going in the y direction. Um, they're both going down as well, so we know they're gonna be negative. And I have their values. So I'm gonna do minus 30 newtons for the shank right here, and minus 10 newtons for the weight. And now it's just simple math to solve. So when you do that, you're gonna, if you bring the JRF over, it'll become positive. And you get 275 minus 40 which is gonna be, what, 235 newtons. And that is your answer there. So here's the X, and here is the Y, which I should have labeled there. JRF Y and JRF X, and that's gonna be your final answer.